So this was my first year attending CES in Las Vegas, and there was a lot of cool and interesting tech on display. So here are some of the cool tech that I was able to see during my time at CES. So let's get into it. Starting off with televisions, the amount of 4K TVs flooded the showroom floor from brands like Hisense, LETV, TCL, and of course LG and Samsung. The theme seemed to be stunning resolution with an insanely thin body, or stunning resolution with a huge display. Some of these TVs were only the size of 4 credit cards stacked together, like you see here with this TV from LG, and others were thinner than your everyday smartphone. On the flip side, LETV had a TV bigger than a full-sized human. If you wanted a big display with amazing resolution, then LG has you covered with their 98-inch 8K Super UHD TV. The picture was incredible and something that needs to be seen in person for sure. Even Hisense got in the 8K television game, but is also bringing a newer take on television with this projector setup called LaserCast. It's definitely a new way to think about projectors and TVs in general, but something that isn't quite ready for mainstream markets. Those who purchase a 4K TV, don't worry, it's still the future and going to be around for a while, but technology is advancing quickly and 8K is close behind. Moving on to some of the cameras, there were a few cameras on display from companies like Panasonic, Canon, and even Sony, but the camera that caught my eye the most was the new digital Super 8 camera from Kodak. That's right, a Super 8 camera that records in film as well as on your SD card, and Kodak will also offer you ways to get your film processed and receive a film reel as well as your digital files. Some new additions to a Super 8 camera would be the digital viewfinder and your external microphone. I'm not really sure how many consumers will purchase this, but it's still a really cool piece of tech in my opinion. There weren't a lot of smartphones or tablets announced by any of the major OEMs, but there were a couple of cool phones announced, including the two that I already covered from Huawei, the Mate 8 and the Honor 5X, and I will leave a link to those videos in the description below. Also announced was the first phone to feature the Snapdragon 820 chip, and that is the LETV Max Pro, which will primarily be targeted towards those in China, but I will be trying to get my hands on this phone sometime soon. There was also a few unexpected smartphones from Polaroid with decent hardware and a very cheap price called the Snap and Power. The Power seems to be their main flagship and will be running some great specs like a 64-bit octa-core processor with 3GB of RAM, 4G LTE, and appears to be running an almost skinless version of Android 5.1 Lollipop. All of this for only $249 off contract. I will be looking forward to checking this phone out in more detail in the near future. The best tablet that I saw goes to the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S, which is a 2-in-1 Windows tablet. Now I'm not usually a fan of Windows tablets unless it's more of a Surface Pro type deal, but the Tab Pro S seems to be a legit Surface Pro competitor. The display is Samsung's amazing AMOLED display, which you will find on the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus, and it also gives you an Intel Core M chip processor, 4GB of RAM, and 256GB of built-in storage. Couple that with the great hardware keyboard, and this is a two-in-one that's definitely an eye-catcher. CES also had a lot of great new headphones announced, including some high-fidelity wireless headphones from Sony, some headphones from Sennheiser, Audio-Technica, and Jaybird with their new Jaybird Freedoms, which as you can see here are really, really small. There were a ton of drones flying around CES in protective cages, of course. Lots of virtual reality, which I did not get to cover due to the long wait, and of course hoverboards that may or may not explode. Now I have never been on a hoverboard, aka a self-balancing scooter before, and the lady insisted on filming me while riding a hoverboard of her own and using my expensive camera. Nothing broke, including any of my bones, but it was actually a lot of fun. There was also a really cool accessory to the Spiro BB-8 droid that you could control with your hand called the Force Band. As you can see here, the guy's waving his hand around, aka using the Force, to control the BB-8 back and forth by using some of the gestures that the band recognizes. This is a cool accessory that should be out soon, and I'm looking forward to getting one and coupling it with a BB-8. Finally, some of the coolest cars were on display for those who were roaming around the convention center, and these cars came from the likes of Ford, Audi, Mercedes, and even Kia. Personally, Kia had one of the better looking concept cars in the showroom floor, and I can't wait till some of these concept cars actually become reality. Also, I saw some real WTF concept cars from Toyota, and whatever the hell this thing is. I didn't get a chance to look more in depth into this ridiculous looking baby carriage, but yeah, what the f is this? Anyways guys, that was some of the cool and interesting tech that I saw at CES 2016. Please subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this, including some of the products that I will be able to test out and fully cover from CES this year. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.